Far Cry New Dawn story begins after the events of Far Cry 5 and there will no doubt be many references and callbacks to the previous game. So in case you missed it or are just looking for a quick refresher, we wanted to provide you with the complete simplified story so far. Our story begins with a psychopathic but exceedingly charismatic villain named Joseph Seed. He's a preacher in Hope County, Montana, who, along with his three equally crazy siblings, has established an army of followers called the Project at Eden's Gate to prepare for the inevitable collapse of civilization. This is where you, the player, arrive, as the rather unfortunate junior deputy chosen to go on a mission to arrest Joseph. Hudson on the door, watch our backs. Don't let any of these people get in. Rookie? As you arrive at the Eden's Gate Church, Joseph offers no resistance to your attempt to arrest him, claiming that God will not allow him to be taken. And as it turns out, he was right. Was blind. I told you that God wouldn't let you take me. You survive the crash and manage to escape the cult. However, in the process, everyone else on the team is captured. Thankfully, you're rescued by a man named Dutch, and together you begin to form a resistance. However, before you can even really get started, you receive a broadcast of the creepiest commercial I've ever seen. We are all sinners. Every one of us. You, me. Even the Father knows deeply of sin. It's a poison that clouds our minds. What if I told you you could be free from sin? What if I told you that everything you ever dreamed could come true? What if I told you that everything could be overcome if you embraced an idea? That freedom from sin can come from the power of just one word. Yes, I must be redeemed. John is the youngest brother of the Seed family, but don't let his charm and good looks fool you. This guy is just as crazy as Joseph. He starts out pretty light in your first meeting by just trying to drown you, but once you've really pissed him off, he'll upgrade to forcibly tattooing sins onto you and your friends and then cutting away the marked flesh. <laughs> There isn't much of a grey area when it comes to killing John. Sure, he has this traumatic childhood to blame his craziness on, but honestly, he's a monster through and through and needs to die. However, with his final breath, he does give you something to think about. What if Joseph is right? Did you ever stop to think about that? With one seat down, you can rescue Deputy Hudson, but there is still a lot of work to do. Going east, you enter the Henbane River, the territory of Faith, the sister of the seeds. I know you've heard stories about me, that I'm a liar, a manipulator, that I poison people's minds. Well, let me tell you a different story. Now, technically, she's not actually their sister, and she's not even the first young girl to be given the name Faith by Joseph. But even if she's not a blood relative, she's still just as insane, although hers is a very different kind of crazy. The path to Eden is clear to those who have faith. Walk the path. She creates and controls a drug called Bliss, and apparently she's been sampling a lot of her own product. 
Even the slightest exposure to the plant can cause hallucinations, and prolonged exposure makes faced victims vulnerable to hypnotic manipulation. She's captured the marshal and has been pumping him full of bliss, but thankfully there is one bit of good news. Sheriff Whitehorse is free and has been attempting to organise some semblance of a resistance. Pull the doors off some of the cells. Do it! Now hop to! We ain't got much time! As you go to war with Faith, she constantly haunts you through these bizarre, bliss-induced hallucinations. However, thankfully, you are able to resist them and eventually rescue the marshal. Stand up! You shouldn't have brought him here. Tracy. Fuck you, Tracy. I said this was a bad idea. I said it from the very beginning. You don't know her. How she digs inside your head. Tracy is right not to trust him, as the moment you turn your back, he follows out his orders, while Faith makes you watch. I'm sorry to have to do this. I'm sorry to have to do this. I wanted there to be another way. I wanted there to be another way. But you made your choice. But you made your choice. Who opened the doors? Oh shit, they're inside! I told you, I didn't want to leave. The resistance here was slaughtered and White House is captured, but it's not long before you can get revenge and bring Faith down. However, I can't help but feel a bit sorry for her. Joseph believes he's our saviour. But you will be the one who decides what happens. You are the start. You'll be the end. You'll choose. And if you don't listen to him, he'll be right. With Faith gone, you clear out her bunker, destroying the Blitz production and rescuing Whitehorse, leaving just one Herald of Joseph to go. Jacob controls the Whitetail Mountains and is the big brother of the Seeds. He once served as a soldier in the US Army, so on top of that grade A insanity, you also get military training. He currently has the other deputy from your team captured and has been forcing the locals to join the cult, capturing and torturing anyone who resists before forcing them to kill each other in trials to cull the weak. As a part of this, he brainwashes his victims, using the song Only You as a trigger to send them into a homicidal state. And after a little while in his territory, the same is done to you. As the music box sends you into this crazed state, you fight your way for an arena before seemingly slipping back into unconsciousness. Why are we even bothering with this? They're all check them anyways. Why am I all stuck on corpse duty? Holy shit! Oh what? fuck! Live one. Walk out the truck. Yes, sir. Oh my god! I'm so sorry. Give me a hand, kid. Eli, is this? Yep. What the fuck is the deputy doing here? Jacob took a shine to us. Same as us. You're gonna be okay, hero. White Tail's got you now. We're bringing him back to the wolf's den? Where else? Tammy's not gonna like this. Don't worry about Tammy, she'll be fine. The group that rescues you are the White Tail Militia, and they've been fighting back against Jacob's forces for a while. Their leader, Eli, knows that you're probably under Jacob's control, but he also knows that they need your help. I meant what I said. We need you. Let's get you some rest. You team up with the militia, but are repeatedly captured by Jacob and subjected to more brainwashing, each time running the same course, getting better and better with each attempt. What Jacob has planned for you remains a mystery, until eventually, there's a twist. Sacrifice. But now, you're 
alone. And you're weak. He used the brainwashing to create a routine in your head, so that when he activated you next, you would do the same thing, only this time you were inside the militia base and killed Eli. You hunt down Jacob to get revenge for what he made you do, but in his final moments he talks about how you did everything that Joseph knew you would and everything he foretold is coming true. You did everything he said you would do. And you didn't even know it. Then after freeing the deputy and putting Eli's body to rest, it's time for the final showdown with Joseph Seed himself. You took my family from me so that I could have yours. We will welcome them with open arms. Just as we will welcome you. We will be waiting for you. Where it all began. He has captured all of your allies from the resistance, hypnotised them with the bliss and is using them to hold your team hostage at the church where this all began. God is watching. You're given the choice to either resist Joseph and arrest him or walk away. Now the canon ending is that you arrest him, so let's cover that first. And the lamb broke the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black, and the moon's under blood. You're forced to fight your friends and then revive them to break Joseph's control on them, before eventually bringing down the man himself. Joseph Seed, you're under arrest. And I heard a great voice from the temple say to the angels, Go your ways and pour from the vials the wrath of God upon the earth. That explosion was the first of the bombs to fall, and that was proof that what Joseph had been saying all along was right. This is the collapse, the end of civilization that Joseph had foreseen. As you try to escape, you're once again in a crash, just like at the start of the game, and once again you wake up in Dutch's bunker. But this time, Dutch is dead, and it's just you, Joseph, and the world itself ending outside. I am your father. And you are my child. And together we will march to Eden's gate. Now this is where Far Cry New Dawn will pick up 17 years later. However, like I mentioned, you had a choice at the church. So this is the non-canon ending of what happened if you just walked away. What are you doing? Truck. Sheriff! Get in the truck. I'm not leaving. Hudson, get in the truck. You lost your fucking mind. Get in the goddamn truck! Sometimes it's best to just leave well enough alone. Let's go. We're gonna get the National Guard and we're gonna bring the hammer down on that goddamn place. No, no way. I'm not gonna be a part of this. You heard what he said. You're gonna do exactly as you're told, Pratt. Only you. What's wrong? The earlier Far Cry games will have little impact on the story of New Dawn, outside of perhaps some Easter eggs. But this is a fascinating series of games, so if you want to know more about how we got here and the controversies surrounding these games, you should definitely check out our video on the history of Far Cry. As for New Dawn, it will be picking up 17 years after the canon ending of Far Cry 5 and you'll be playing as a completely new character, but hopefully we'll be able to find out exactly what happened to everyone after the bombers fell. As always, this is James for Cats, saying thanks for watching, and enjoy the game.